thank you, Commissioner. The next witness that ANZ, I invite ANZ to call is Ms Sarah Stubbings. Uh, Ms Stubbings, would you prefer to take an oath or would you prefer to make an affirmation? Um, I'll take an affirmation, please. Thank yes, you, affirm please. the witness, please. I solemnly and sincerely... I solemnly and sincerely... Declare and affirm... Declare and affirm... That the evidence I shall give... That the evidence I shall give... Will be the truth... Will be the truth... The whole truth... The whole truth... And nothing but the truth... And nothing but the truth. Thank you, Ms Stubbings. Do sit down. Yes, Dr. Rush. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Ms. Stubbings, is your full name Sarah Mary Stubbings? Yes, it is. And is your business address 833 Collins Street, Docklands, Melbourne? Yes, it is. And are you currently the head of Home Loan Product Australia at ANZ? Uh, currently, yes. Did you receive a witness summons to attend to the Commission? I did, yes. Have you got that summons with you? I do. Commissioner, I tender the summons. Exhibit 1.125, summons to Stubbings. Thank you, Commissioner. Ms Stubbings, were you requested to prepare a witness statement in response to questions from the Commission? Uh, yes, I was. Do you have a copy of that witness statement with you? Uh, yes, I do. Ms Stubbings, I understand that there are some corrections you wish to make to the witness statement? Yes, I do. There are three corrections, is that correct? Yes. It's the first correction at paragraph 52C of your statement? Yes. Is the correction that you wish to make at the end of the second line to delete March and insert July? Yes. So you would like me to do that now and just initiate? Yes, please. Yes. If, you, if you strike out what's yes. wrong, put in what's right and initial it. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Stubbings, the second correction I understand you wish to make is to paragraph 56B at the top of page 11 of your statement, and that is to delete the parentheses and all the words in the parentheses in subparagraph B. Is that correct? Yes, it is. If you could do that, please, and initial it. Mr. Stubbings, is the final correction you wish to make to paragraph 60 of your statement? Yes. And is the correction that you wish to, wish to make to delete the words in the parentheses on line three and to substitute them with the words based on the information obtained in March and July 2017? Yes, that's correct. If you could do that, please. Thank you. Stubbings, is your statement now true and correct? Yes. Commissioner, tender the statement and exhibits. Exhibit 1.126, witness statement, Sarah Mary Stubbings and exhibits. No questions in chief. Yes, Mr. Donnelly. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> Good afternoon, Ms Stubbings. My name is Albert Denali and I'm one of the counsel assisting the Royal Commission. Your current role, we just heard, is head of home loan product, is that right? Yes, that's right. And you've held that role since May of last year? Uh, March. March, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry about that, it is March. Um, we understand from the statement that from, from next month, um, you will be Australia Division Executive responsible for large consumer, sorry, customer remediation programs in the new responsible banking team, is that right? Yes, that's right. At present, as Head um, of Home Loan Product Australia, you're responsible for delivering home loan products to ANZ customers, is that right? Yes. Um, it's fair to say that the size of that portfolio is very large. Um, uh, prox uh, with a value of approximately $265 billion, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. 
Um, are you able to tell the Commission what proportion of the home loans in offer, on offer uh, in Australia are issued by your organisation? Uh, our market share is about 15.7 per cent. I'm sorry, what number? Are you? You'll need uh, to speak up a little so, more, Ms Starling. Right, sorry. My apologies. Uh, it's about 15.7 per cent, I think. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Now, in your statement, I might say, helpfully, it's been necessary to distinguish between different issues that we're going to talk about today. And I'll use that same descriptor that you've used, um, and in fact, that flows from uh, that flows from uh, the responses that ANZ's made to the Commission. You refer to certain instances of misconduct in a shorthand way of items 137 or item 138. Can I take you please to RCD.001.0035.0035 that in my witness statement? No, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Ms Stubbings. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, it will okay. come up on the screen, we hope, if the system works. Right, OK, thank you. Now, if, if you'd like, Ms Stubbings, we can all, we've also got some hard copies of some documents. Yes, I, I wouldn't mind if I could have the hard copies. That would be helpful. Yep. Um, Do you have those? Do you have the You make these offers, Mr Donnelly. <laughs> you make good on. Um, ANZ. And hear ANZ's submission about the Commission not delivering on its offers, Mr yes. Donnelly. Um, I'm sorry. Um, maybe if it could be, what's on the screen could be made uh, yep. a bit larger for Ms Stubbings, please. I'm struggling to read that. Thank you. Um, so if, and if it's easier for you, you can use the, the written version. Um, if one, if we can go to z point zero one two three. That's the doc ID in the top right hand corner. Oh, okay. It should be, I think. You've got double zero one two three, or zero one two three. I don't have any, um document IDs and you uh, make it's, life fun for you, Mr. Item 137. Okay, so. thank you. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay, yes. Um, so when we talk about item 137, it's in fact two issues. Um, and one of the first one um, is that between 2006 and July 2013, certain break-free home loan customers were charged interest rate higher than they should have been according to the break-free terms and conditions. Do you see that? Yes. Um, and the second issue is that in addition between 2003 and December 2012, some offset accounts were not properly linked to home loans, resulting in customers being charged excess interest. Yes. So when we talk, when you talk in your statement about item 137, you're referring to two things. One is an interest rate, a higher interest rate that was um, uh, that was um, applied than that which had been a, the subject of the terms and conditions, and two, a separate issue, which is that some offset accounts were not properly linked to home loans. Am I right? Yes. Now, the break-free package is something that you speak about in your statement, obviously. Uh, with while the witness has it, are you going to uh, yes, later go to item 138? Or? Uh, it might be easiest to tender those, to go to them, to identify them, and then to tender, tender those pages. Tender 137 and 138 are just declutters and a bit. Thank you. Um, 138 should appear immediately below that. Um, and that is described as a... ANZ identifying certain further issues with break-free packages um, following the earlier break-free issues and it was identified that the earlier remediation had not properly addressed the processes where customers selected a break-free package after drawdown or linked an existing home loan to a new break-free package. Yes, that's That's correct. what you refer to as the item 138 issue. And for convenience, we might go to them now although I'll deal with them sequentially. Sure. Um, on the previous page, if that assists you, 
um, 135 appears, and that is that at a period of six months in 2016, certain customers did not receive the correct interest rate margin discount on their home loan. That's what you call item 135? Yes. Uh, and then immediately above that um, is item 134, which provides that between 14 December 2012 and February 2016, approximately 4,800 offset accounts had not been linked to an eligible retail home loan. Yes. And finally, if I can skip ahead a few pages to what you describe as item 151, You're, you're probably quicker than us in with the <laughs> hard copy, Ms Stubbings. Um, and that is, and I'll read it out if you haven't been able to find it there, but it's that some home loan and commercial lending accounts were not receiving the full benefit of offset arrangements due to the way the offset subsystem calculates interest as compared to the loan subsystem. Yes, that's right. Okay, and that's item 151. So I'm going to ask you some questions about those five issues this afternoon, although you've identified that item 137 has two sub-issues within it. Yes, you mean in terms of the fees and interest? You yes, that's yes. correct. That's correct. Oh, sorry, 137 is the... 137 um, is the first yes, one, which sorry, is the yes, linking. Yes, the linking, um, sorry, And the, apologies, the yes. wrong interest rate, which, yes. if I may say, is the most significant of the items that we're going to discuss this afternoon. And is it convenient to make items 134, 135, 137, 138 and 151 of ANZ response to 2nd February 18, inquiry RCD 001035088, Exhibit 1.127. That is convenient, thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> okay. Um, Ms Stubbings, we've, you've referred in your um, statement to the break-free package which has been in existence since February 2003. Can you assist the Commission by explaining what is um, or the nature of the break-free package? Um, so the break-free package provides customers um, with um, discounts on their home loans, on eligible home loans, and fee waivers on a deposit account, so whether that's an offset account or just a transactional account, a credit card, and it has some other sort of um, benefits around insurance sort of discounts and things of the like. I see. Um, so the benefits, just taking them um, one by one, is that you get interest rate discounts, yes. potential interest rate discounts, fee waivers for home lending accounts. Yes. Um, and it's your evidence, or you've said in paragraph 12, and it's your evidence that the package is designed for con customers who want transparent discounted interest rates on their home loans, as well as access to a range of benefits and products across ANZ. Is that right? Yes. And is that the main um, product, um, home loan product offered by ANZ? Yeah, I think we, well, we say that 79% well, of our home lending is attached to break-free packages. So, I see. Yes. I see. And customers are charged a $395 annual break-free package fee, is that correct? Yes. Thank you. And a necessary link um, as part of the... I, I, sorry, let me withdraw that. If a customer elects to have an offset account as part of the break-free package, then the offset account needs to be linked to the home loan, is that correct? Look, it it, regardless of whether it's a uh, break-free package or not, if it, a customer elects to have an offset account, then it needs to be linked to an eligible home loan to be effective. Just for my assistance, uh, the, of, the linking, how does that operate and why is that of significance in, in the context of the break-free package and generally? Yeah. Uh, well, the offset account is linked to the home loan and effectively it reduces the amount of interest you have to pay on your home loan. So if you have a $50,000 um, offset account and a $100,000 home loan, effectively you're only paying um, interest on net $50,000. I see, I see. And 
for the offset account to work um, effectively, it's your evidence that it needs to be linked to the home loan? Yes. Can I deal, of the two 137 issues, the incorrect interest rate and the linkage, I'll deal first with the incorrect interest rate being the, the way in which this document can come down now. There were, if I understand it correctly, before 2012 there were ad hoc instances of customer complaints about the wrong interest rate being applied, is that right? Uh, before 2010. 10, I'm sorry, before 2010? Yes, that's my understanding. And um, is it right to say that ANZ identified that certain mortgage loan customers have been charged an interest rate higher than they should have been according to the terms and conditions? Sorry, do you mean on an ad hoc basis? Or yes, on an ad hoc basis there were some that um, yes. you'd identified before 2010. Yes. And in 2010, um, in your statement at SMS 1, which is ANZ.800.223.0977, I'm just calling it up, it's also easier, if it's easier for yeah. you, it's SMS 1, Ms Stubbings. Okay, so that's the ASIC letter. Yeah. So this is an as a letter from... Oh, from ANZ to ASIC, yes. From ANZ to ASIC on the 17th of June, 2010? Yes. What is, what is this letter? Well, this is a letter from ANZ to ASIC, basically identifying that there were potential issues with um, the way our break-free package was working in the context of the application of the right um, interest rate um, discounts and also um, the issue with the linkage of the offset accounts. If we can go to the second page, you deal with, sorry, the third page, which is 0979, you deal there under a heading to mortgage am I, am custom. Am I able to have a paper copy of the um, It should be in your statement. Oh, my apologies, you're right, no. yes, SMS you, sorry. One. My apologies. Yes. Page three of the letter, are we at? Yep. Page three. Yes. Which is, um, yes. I don't think they're, they should be numbered in the top right hand corner. Yes. I've been referring yes. to these numbers, which are yes. all in the top right hand yes. corner. Thank you. Um, and it ends 0 0.0979. Yes, I have it. Thank you. And you describe there um, the identification of, the, the issue, um, of this issue. Um, the break-free package issue? That's correct. Um, that's right, under yeah. under two. Yeah. And if you one goes over the page to point oh nine eight zero, you then explain the um, the cause of the breach and you go on to identify the fact that ANZ's current process of entering loan details including the appropriate discounted interest rate means that this error may have occurred at various spots. Um, along the process, that is, it could have been the branch staff initially entering the applicable rate. Do you see that? Yes. Um, it could have been credit assessors entering a price for a broker, mobile lender. A second way, a third way could be where the centralised break-free team set up linkages of new accounts under an existing package. Um, D, when a document preparation um, by staff generate loan, sorry, when document preparation staff generate loan documentation or five, when servicing staff undertake maintenance actions where rate changes may occur. Yes. Just for my benefit, are those five different steps that occur in different places at different times? Um, yes. Um, and the outcome was that a higher rate of interest than that provided in the break fee package had been charged on the mortgage lending? Yeah. So, so effectively a customer either didn't receive a discount that they should have or they received the wrong discount based on the terms of the package. I see. And this letter... There was a meeting with ASIC to discuss um, this particular issue um, some time later. In fact, a, a meeting occurred in May 2011, which... Um, is, if you'll bear with me, okay, that's 
um, there was a meeting with ASIC in about May 2011 um, regarding this product. I don't think you were at um, that meeting. You weren't in the No, I wasn't. Role, but are you aware that there were discussions with ASIC? Um, I was aware there were discussions with ASIC throughout the course of the remediation period, yes. I see, and I'll come back to that in due course. In your statement, you say um, that the first instance of error occurred in relation to the wrong interest rate on the 23rd of May 2006. Can you, just, can you assist the Commission by explaining what that error was that occurred or how it came to ANZ's attention on the 23rd of May 2006? Um, the 23rd of May 2006 date is not the date necessarily of the first error. It's the date that we had data available I see. in order to do, be able to determine the impact for break-free customers. I, I, I think you just say in your statement that the instances of error were remediated on an ad hoc basis from 23 May 2006, is that right? Yes. Um, and that then, if I understand your evidence correctly, there were various um, ad hoc remediations that occurred over a period of time? It's not so much it's an ad hoc remediation. If there's a customer complaint yes. and they didn't, they're ringing up to say, I thought I was getting a 50 basis point I discount, then they would ring up ANZ and we would reconstruct their loan on a, you know, an individual basis and, and put them back into the position they should have been. Well, I mean, the ad hoc is your language though. Yes. You say, relevantly, a paragraph 50, instances of error were remediated on an ad hoc basis from 23 May 2006 until the implementation of system fixes in 2012 and 2013. That is your evidence, isn't it? Yes, it is. What I mean by um, ad, ho ad hoc as opposed to an actual remediation program of work. Yes. Uh, so there had been some remediation as early as 2006. This is in relation to the wrong interest rate issue. Yes, on an ad hoc basis. On the ad hoc yeah. basis. I'm, I'm happy to use that language. In fact, at a later point in time, but I want to take you to this for the purposes of understanding how these issues arose over time, PwC prepared a report. This is ANZ.800.223.1056. Is this one of the ones that's in my witness It's not actually in your statement. Yeah. It's but I'll see if I can assist you in a moment. Yes, thank you. This is dated 29 November 2013. Um, you're, the barrister for ANZ indicated to me that you'd prefer to read things in, yes, which, which is absolutely fine. So yes. we're trying to attend to that. Thank and you. I appreciate apologise about that. Um, so we'll just get a copy of that to you, but I can ask you some questions before that arise, arrives. You'll see broadly that you'll see on the screen that it's the MBORP. Can you assist the Commission by explaining that acronym? Yes. That's what the, pro the remediation program became known as, the Mortgages Break Free and Offset Remediation Program. So I see. we just referred it to, it's quite wordy, so it the MBORP was easier to That's refer okay. to. That's we'll, okay. We'll get into the lingo. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take a moment to make sure that you've navigated to the right place. Ms Stubbings, just take your time and find where you need to be and then we'll go on. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. So this is a document dated the 29th of November 2013. It's a PWC report. Yes. I'd like to take you, if I may, to page one, it ending point 1071. Can you explain, and that's just coming up on the screen now, can you explain to um, the, the Commission what that um, graph indicates? Uh, it's my understanding that this is looking at just the error legs um, around the offset refunds over the period 2003 through to um, the 2013. I assume 2013 is picked as the end point because that's when the relevant 
what you describe as the fixes occurred. Yes. Uh, and so over the course of that time, um, and I'm not familiar with the term error legs, but does that indicate, is that what the term that you use to describe when an error has occurred that has required some form of remediation? So an error leg is when um, at, at a point where the offset has either not been linked, so it would have been a long er potentially a long error leg, or it might have been linked, it became unlinked and it was an error, and yes. then it became linked again, so it's that sort of that error leg. So that does, does this graph deal with the application of the wrong, the incorrect interest rate? No, this is about the offset. This is the offset, okay, we'll, we'll return to it for that yes. purpose then um, in, in due course. Um, Um, I might tender the document, though, whilst I'm there, if I may, Commissioner. Exhibit 1.128, uh, PwC Report 29, uh, November 13. Uh, mortgage break-free and uh, offset... Uh, remediation, remediation program. Remediation program, thank you. Uh, ANZ 800 223 1056. Thank you, Commissioner. So I can un understand your. <coughs> your evidence um, in this regard. When you wrote. when. ANZ decided to write to ASIC in June 2010. It, am I right to say it wrote because it identified this as a systemic error rather than one that was merely the product of a series of ad hoc instances? Yes, at that point in time, ANZ made a call that it was systemic. Thank you. Are you able to assist by indicating how much remediation was made in the period from 2006 to 2010 because of this issue, that is on an ad hoc basis when someone complained? I don't know exactly what it was between 2006 and 2010. Um, but it's your evidence that there was um, a number yes. of ad hoc events yes. that occurred where a customer would ring up ANZ and say, I don't think the right interest rate is being applied. Yeah, so my, um, that was, wasn't based on that time period. So mine was based on, I guess, sort of throughout the period um, when they did the calculation to determine how much to pay to customers, they identified that there was between five to six million dollars in refunds that had already been paid to customers um, as a result of reconstructing their home loan accounts um, for either the offset um, reason or the um, interest rate reason. And that occurred over between anywhere between the period 2003 up to sort of July 2013. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that's for a clarifying both that. So that deals issues. with both, and that's yes. why I think, um, if I may say, I think that's why item 37 is together because it's been dealt with by ANZ internally yes. along the way in relation to both. Yes. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Now, in, in fairness to you, you identify, um, you identify in your evidence that on the basis of the number of customer complaints about the 137 issues, now, I'm referring plural to yes. both of them that arose prior to 2010. It's your view that ANZ should have realised that this was a systemic issue earlier than 2010. Is that right? Yes. In fact, on the evidence that you've given, there was five to six million dollars of remediation which was done because of these issues even before the remediation that occurred at the start of 2014. Yes. And that was for the ho that was for the period from 2003 to 2013. Um, yes. Now, 2003, for the assistance of the commission, is an important date because that's the date where the first ad hoc, to use your terminology. Um, the first ad hoc instances that you've identified in relation to the linking issue, is that correct? Yes, that's right. No, no sorry, the, that September 2003 date is the date to which we had available data I see. with regards to the offset um, linkage issue. I see. Uh, 
sorry, can I just understand that better than I am at the moment? Yes. Uh, are you telling me there was no data available to you that would enable you to go back pre-03 and pre say... Pre-September 2003. Pre-September 03. Uh, you had no data that would enable you to go back pre-September 03 and find out whether there uh, had been some problem or no. That is my understanding, yes. yes. So it's what I'd understood. I just yes. needed to check that was so. In paragraph 49, you say, Ms Stubbings, that for the offset linkage issue, instances <coughs> of error were remediated on an ad hoc basis from 23 September 2003. And that's the date that you yes, identified. that's previously. right, okay. yes. And when to... Is, Understand now. Now I'm talking about the offset linkage issue. Yes. The fact that a number of accounts you realised had not been you, I say you, A and Z yes. realised had not been properly linked to their home loans. The time, the date at which that became, in A and Z's view, a systemic error was the 17th of June 2010. Is that correct? Yes. And do you know? how many, this is in relation to the linkage issue, how many of those ad hoc instances had occurred between 2003 and 2010 before a decision was made that that was a systemic error? No, I don't know how many of those ad hoc complaints had arisen. Uh, but to the extent you can assist the Commission, it's in relation to the quantum of both of those yes. that had occurred from 2003 yes. to 2013. Now, I know that goes over 2010, yes. yep. but that's because the fix wasn't done yes. until 2013. Right. Yep. Are you able to give me any feel, that maybe no better than a feel, for the number of customers who were in that period 03 to 13? <laughs> Uh, and if, if you can't, you can't. Yeah. Look, it's hard to say. I mean, my evidence was on the basis we paid out five to six million dollars. That's not an insignificant amount, sure. you know, over that period. In terms of how many customers sit underneath that, I, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Okay. If. I might take you back to SMS 1 in your materials. The Commissioner asked about these ad hoc instances and whether or not you had a, f a feel for those figures. If one goes to the second page of that, which is ANZ.800.223.0978, um, that's the second page of that letter. Are you there? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm there. Um, where you refer to the number of um, unlinked accounts about at a, a three quarters, 0.7 of the page. Can you see number and frequency of similar breaches? A number and frequency of similar breaches? Yes, I can see. The there it says the number of offset accounts currently unlinked from eligible loan accounts is approximately 6,000. Can you explain what, whether that is that figure at that time that were unlinked that ANZ or discovered, or is it some other figure? I don't know exactly what that 6,000 um, relates to or what time period. Um, but I do know clearly we identified, you know, many more offset accounts that were unlinked. Yes, and in fact, we'll come to that, but ultimately there was a lot more where this issue arose, wasn't there? Yes. Staying with that chronology of it at that time, so this is in June 2010 that this letter was sent. If I can take you to ANZ.800.071.6787. Wait, is that in my one no, of my witness no, statement no, but items? I might or? see if you're. Well, um, she has a bundle of papers, which I assume it's in the bundle of papers. Is it or? I assume it would be, although I don't know if I can. Dr. Rush, is it in the bundle? Do you think? We're just going to look, uh, Commissioner. We'll just bear with me for one moment, if the Commissioner wouldn't mind. Um, we do, we've got a table of the documents, and we're just going to. Oh, someone has. Okay. If you, could you give me tab thirty-eight? I understand it's tab 38. Tab 38, I'm told. Uh, 
Yes. Now, a lot of that document you'll find is redacted, yes. or at least you might be able to see it. Um, but if I could take you to the first page, um, it's headed Report of the Chief Executive Officer. What, does, what sort of document is this from your experience? Look, I believe this would have been a report um, from the CEO to the board. I see. Um, and as you can see, it's dated July 2010. Can you go to the third page, which is 0 0.6789? Yes. And this issue was sufficiently important um, that under the heading legal compliance issues in mortgages, instances of overcharging customers in relation to offset accounts, break-free package discounts not applied and discounts loaded incorrectly, ANZ has been notified a provision of $20 million. Can you see that? Um, ASIC has been notified. Um, yes. yes, and yes. a provision of $20 million has been raised. Yes. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, that was a very significant underestimate, wasn't it? Um, yes, the, we, we ended up paying out $69.3 million. And uh, if I may tender that document... Um, 1.129 ANZ 800-071-6787, report of CEO to board July 2010. Uh, and in fact, soon thereafter, um, that same issue, if I can go to uh, an audit committee report, ANZ.800.088.1244. Yes, I have that. And it's tab 39. I think it yes. might be the next tab. Yes, I have it. Yes. Um, do you know what this type of document is, Ms Stubbings? Uh, so this is a report from our auditors, um, KPMG, yes. to um, the board, I presume as part of our year-end financial results. Yes, um, for the year ended 30 September 2010, which was of course the year, uh, the year which included the relevant date when this issue arose as a yeah. systemic issue. Um, and if we can go to point 0.1257, which hopefully you also have, which is about page 13 or 14 of the document. Yes, I do, yep. Uh, and again, you'll see a mortgage offset provision. Yes. $23 million. Yes. $23 million. Um, and there's a st statement there in the second paragraph, management present estimate of the number of current customer accounts is now less than 1,000. Are you able to assist in any way as to how that figure had dropped so significantly since the June disclosure to ASIC? Um, I, I can't comment on that. Uh, you'd agree that the figure that that the <coughs> then CEO had in his um, report to the board had a $20 million provisioning. This is now $23 million, yet the difference between the amount of people um, in the June letter and, and, and this statement seems to have decreased significantly. Yes. And you don't can't explain that in any other way in, in any way. No, I can't explain that. And you'd agree, of course, that that is, as things transpired, a very very significant underestimate of the number of customers affected. Yes, absolutely. I tender that document if I may. Exhibit one point one three zero ANZ eight hundred zero eight eight one two four four audit committee report year ended thirty September twenty ten KPMG. Thank you, Commissioner. Now, I've asked you already um, about the cause of the, um, or I've identified already the second issue within 137, that is the failure to link the offset accounts. I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may, um, about a document which is SMS 7 to your materials, um, and it is ANZ.800.223.1330. Sorry, what were the last four numbers? Um, yeah, I'll just, if you go to the first page. Oh, so the first page, with. yes. 
and, and I'll come to, I'll ask you some questions in a moment. Now, you've said that customers were being remediated in relation to this issue on an ad hoc basis from the 26th of September, 2003. Yes, that's based on, that date's based on when we had data about When you had the data, yes. thank you. Um, and can you explain what this document here is? So the whole document? <laughs> yeah, just the nature of this document that's headed Product Strategy and Marketing Mortgage for Break Free and Offset Remediation Project Checkpoint 1. So this was a review by our internal audit function. They came in and did a sort of full review of where the project was at. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, provided a rating of AMBER, which indicated that... Um, you know, that, that the project was at risk of missing its timelines and raised a number of issues um, with regards to uh, where the project was at. Okay, so this is about a year after the systemic issue has been identified yes. and your internal auditors have said it's AMBER. What does, what exactly does AMBER mean within... So AMBER um, was that comment that I made that it's at risk of not uh, meeting its deadlines. I see. Um, do you recall what the deadlines were at that time? Um, Look, I don't... I'll take you to some other documents in a moment, but there was, I think it's fair to say... They moved uh, around a little, yes. Thank you. They did move around. If one can... If you can go to point 1335... Yes. Um... There's a reference to CAP system solutions and the addition of manual processes to fully stop the offset errors from occurring. What's CAP system mean? Um, CAP is one of our um, loan origination systems. Yes. Um, and this is um, one year in after this issue has been identified and the statement that's made in this document is accordingly there remains the risk that the remediation approach adopted focuses on manual and detect it may be def and detective controls rather than investing in system based solutions which improve customer experience and help prevent errors being made yes um, is what is being Am I right to say that at this time the internal auditors were suggesting that there was a risk that what was being done was a band-aid solution, if I can use that term, rather than a proper fix of this issue? Um, I'm not sure I'd say band-aid, but um, I think they're certainly suggesting that, you know, um, we should be look looking at system fixes as well as exception reporting or manual processes. So what do you understand to be meant by system fixes? So actually building automation into the system. Yes. So um, to prevent these types of issues occurring. Um, and at this time, the steering committee, the next sentence says, the steering committee has not decided on the long-term fixes, but discussions to date indicate limited appetite for the significant technology investment given CAP, SME constraints, broader technology constraints and the required technology spend. Does that help you to understand what was in the minds of those who um, were on the steering committee at that time? Yes. And they at that time had not decided on long-term fi fixes to this problem because there was limited appetite to, to make the investment in significant to technology to stop this happening. Is that right? I can't comment really on the appetite. I can comment on what ultimately was done and, um, you know, there was certainly investment in system and automation um, to, um, you know, reduce the occurrence of, of these issues. Having seen, though, sitting here now, sitting here now, having seen how long this has gone on for, this is something that is concerning that this was what was in the minds of these people at that time, isn't it? Look, I think um, they were still working through the impact from a customer perspective. Because the... Um, sorry, Ms Stubbings. Yeah, so I think they were still working that through. You know, as that became clearer over the course of the remediation, um, it became very clear that system fixes were needed. In fact, the project... It goes on to say, and this is the last 
section I'll take you to this page. The project is currently reviewing initial proposals for an interim fix to incorporate system fixes to cap at an acceptable cost and within a shorter time frame. You see that? Yes. And Can I explore this, um, deal with this document a little bit more detail? If one goes to point 1337, so two pages on. Yes. Um, the second last dot point, while well, the errors were identified, that paragraph? Yes. Do you accept, and is it the basis for your um, concession that these issues should have been um, identified earlier, that the complaints weren't properly tracked by product in the period before 2010? Um, based on the information that's presented here, that would be... And that was one of the reasons why the root cause of the common complaints, as this said, um, couldn't be identified or took some time to identify, I should say. Um, that comment would indicate that. I'm sorry? That comment would indicate that. Yes. But it's also a view that you've formed yourself. Yes. And if one goes to the, um, the next page, now this is of course in July 2011, and I accept I'm asking you about a long time ago and matters of which you don't have personal knowledge. Um, but there's a reference here to residual risk, reporting of residual risk. And if one goes to the second paragraph, the business risks of the offset remediation was presented to the Mortgages Compliance Project Steering Committee in December 2010. This identified the risk of the offset error as having an extreme level of residual risk for the business, provision of 23 million made, resulting in a moderate consequence with almost certain likelihood. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Why is it that this goes on to say that the risk has not yet been formally tabled at the Australian Risk Committee? And there are no additional updates to reflect key events that have occurred since the issue was first reported? I can't comment on that. This is certainly something that ought to have been of concern to ANZ at that time, isn't it? Yes. And in fact, as... Sorry, at what level in the bank should it have... To what level should the concern have gone do um, you think? If it's an extreme risk, then it goes up to the Operational Risk at Executive Committee. It may have been a timing issue in terms of that they haven't, you know, the timing of the meetings or whatever it may have been. I just can't comment on that chronology. understand that, but extreme risks are risks that you ordinarily would expect yes. would go to OREC. Yes. Exactly. Is that right? Yes, and there are papers in here that have been tendered to the OREC about the extreme risk, yes. With the benefit of hindsight, I am actually asking you, but obviously you're the person now in charge, but with the benefit of hindsight, these things should have been elevated and elevated at an earlier point in time, shouldn't they? Um, you know, the fact that it hadn't gone to Oric, you know, that, yes, I think that should have gone to them earlier, yes. Thank you. Can I ask you about the process to fix this issue? It took, I think it's fair to say, a long time to put a fix in place, didn't it? Uh, there were various fixes that were put in place. The system fixes will take longer um, to put in place, so tactical fixes were put in initially. I'm and terribly then as sorry, Ms Stubbings, you're going to have to speak, speak up. up. Sorry, sorry. Commissioner. Um, <laughs> What I was saying is that there were a mix of tactical and strategic fixes that were put in place. The tactical ones are easier to do. Um, the strategic ones take longer because they involve system automation. 
So what do you mean by a tactical as compared to a strategic? Oh, that might be building an exception report or something like that, as opposed to actually building into our core systems um, parameters to um, limit what our frontline staff or assessment staff can put in, in terms of um, appropriate discounts. Uh, one of the reasons you've described as a cause of these both problems was the fact that the information was being put into the relevant system. I assume that's the CAP system. Uh, it? it could have been CAP, um, I know, borrow, or RLS as we call it, or um, MOZ, which um, yeah, it's, it's various systems, origination uh, systems we have. But they, they are... Uh, a but the access to those systems is very was at the relevant time very disparate. That is to say, there could have been any number of um, people who could have um, inputted their information or forgotten, as the case may be, in relation to the offset to link the accounts. Is that right? Yes, that is right. And in fact, the offset issue arose um, predominantly because of that very thing, the failure to link the account, which had to be done manually. Yes. You say, you say at paragraph 33 that processes and controls to prevent the recurrence of these issues were put in place progressively from April 2012 to June 2013. Is that, <coughs> is that your evidence as to when these um, fixes were put in place? Uh, that's my understanding, yes. In, and I'll take you to um, SMS 2, um, you'd be obviously familiar with this document having prepared your statement. Yeah. This is dated June 2014. Yes. Um, and is um, a document, a summary for discussion. Who would have prepared this document? Um, I don't know exactly who prepared it. I presume it was someone who was a member of the project team. I, I don't know. The steering committee, is that what it was called? If what you want goes to the second page, there... There's an expl explanation that due to the scale and complexity of the errors, the... I sorry, the third dot point, the... I the identity and fix activities the were not... Identify and fix, I think. I'm sorry? Identify and fix. The identify, thank you, Commissioner. The identify and fix activities were not completed until 2013. Um, and likewise, um, if one goes down to preventative measures, there's a heading, preventative measures have been in place since 2013. And on the third dot point, it says, in addition, exception reporting was introduced to review 100% of accounts, both offset and break free, and identify and fix any errors which may have still occurred. Are you confident that by this time the error had been um, resolved? I think if so, we remediated um, offset customers up until December 2012, and we remediated break free customers up until um, July 2013. So that was sort of at the point where we were comfortable that um, the indicators were telling us that the um, errors had been resolved. And I was coming to the remediation. Um, can you inform the Commission how many people, it turns out, were um, remediated in relation to bro both the offset issue and, and the um, incorrect interest rate issue? Yeah. So there were um, about 400,000 accounts um, identified as being impacted by the issue. Um, 235,000 of those accounts received a uh, payment, a remediation payment. Uh, the other 165,000 accounts had um, an impact of less than $2 for an open account or less than $20 for a closed account. And um Your evidence is that um, the, the relevant steering committee was put into place in the second half of 2010 to, to deal with these issues? Yes. And 
the initial project, your evidence is that the initial project team made progress gathering the data necessary for the remediation from the start? Um, yes, I believe so, yes. And um, I know paragraph 35 of your yeah. statement. Um, is your evidence in paragraph 35 that the process of extracting that data was time consuming? Is it your evidence that it took until 2000, um, 2013 to fix the problem and to remediate all people um, affected by it? Um, yes, I, th I believe, I, I, yes, effectively, because that's when we remediated the break free customers up to um, July 2013. Um, when, when were you initially um, aiming to resolve this issue by? Do you recall what the initial um, time frame was? Look, there's, a f there's a few various dates. Um, um, I'm not sure which is the... Um, at, when in the latter part of 2010, um, in the latter part of 2010, the committee was um, uh, established, um, or perhaps if I can take you to a document to yes, that would be helpful. Um, explain this. If one goes to, and I'll try to get um, the relevant tab for you as well, Ms. Stubbings, but the document is ASIC.0011. So sorry, could you please say no, that no, again I'm for me? I'm sorry, Ms. Stubbings, I won't be a moment. As at, as at 16 August 2011, am I right to say that it was intended that the timelines for the process refunds and fixes for this project w were to be finished by August 2012? Um, could I have the document? Sorry. Um, excuse me, Ms. Dubbings, Commissioner. Sorry, I'll, I won't be able to show you a document that, um, in relation to that, um, Ms. Tubbings. But if I could, there, if, if I could describe it in these terms, there was an ASIC briefing pack on the 16th of August 2011, um, entitled "Mortgage Break Free and Offset Remediation Project." Mm -hmm. Would it? Um, accord with your recollection and your knowledge of these events that as at that time it was intended that the process would be finished by August 2012? Uh, look, I've certainly seen documents that have had 20, 2012 dates, so yes. See. Um, because... That's the remediation time. I've got a 13. Then, if I can go to ANZ.800.223.0490. Um, sorry, and say that again. Sorry, uh, I'll call it up on the system and I'll hopefully be able to find yeah. where it is for you. Tab 10 for you, Ms. Tab Dubbins. 10. Um, yes, I have that. And if I could take you to the third page, I think it is, point zero four nine two. Yes. Now, in relation to the fixes, so this is the offset fix timelines 
as at that time it was intended to be fixed by the 3rd of September 2012. Do you see that? Yep. Um, in relation to the remediation, however, if one goes to point zero four nine eight. I'll just turn that around. You should be able to see it there, yes, I, I hope. Yeah. You see that the target date for that, this is the process refunds fix accounts has become TBC. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Yes. Am I right to say that essentially the timeline to actually resolve this only had any uh, had any certainty when PwC became involved, is that right? Um, we asked PwC to come in and do a review of um, where the project was at, and partic particularly around the, um, the refund calculation itself. Um, that was an important piece, and also around the processes and controls that the project had put in place, and also around the next steps to really um, progress the remediation. So they were asked to do those three things. I see. And the pro the uh, in your and they their involvement their involvement started am i right to say that their involvement started in um the latter part of 2012? Um, I believe it was August 2012. Yes. What date is the briefing pack, do you say, Mr Donnelly? The briefing pack to which I've just taken... Uh, oh, yes, that has to be tendered for those two documents. Ought, ought be tendered. The ASIC briefing... The asset briefing pack, I don't have a date. I'll have to assist the Commission in a moment with a date for that. But there's two documents that I went to. The first is ANZ.800.223.3054. And that's the mortgage break free and offset remediation process asset briefing pack. We've been to that. Uh, yeah, I didn't tender two documents, Commissioner. Sorry, I've lost myself. You haven't lost no, me, I've lost myself. I hadn't uh, caught up with the fact we'd been to 3054. That's my fault, no doubt. No, no, no. It's a, no um, the two documents um, that I wish to tender for which, which don't have a date on them is We've got 0490 up. Can we deal with it first? Yes, that. That's Exhibit 1.131, ASIC you. Briefing Pack, uh, ANZ 800 0490. Thank you. That's the next one that's the mystery in my life, yes. Mr. Donnelly. Um, and the next one, which precedes it in time, but is also undated, although we'll get some <coughs> dates, is, is also headed, has the same heading, Mortgage Break Free and Offset Remediation Project, ANZ.800.223.3054. And I don't uh, has Miss Stubbings been taken to yes. that briefing pack? The, that is the 3054 briefing pack. That, um, is, is that an ASIC um, pack or is it the PwC? Um, <laughs> yes, she, I ask questions by reference, or but I don't seek to tender the document at this stage. Well. I'm sorry, <coughs> Commissioner. So I'll just tender the one that you have tendered, if I may. Yeah, that's Exhibit 1.131. Yes. Thank you.
was it? So where we left your evidence was that in April 2012, um, PwC was engaged by ANZ, is that right? August. August, August I'm sorry, yes, 2012. It's fine. And is it right to say that, um, that ANZ at this time was um, not pleased with, um, with how the remediation progress um, uh, process was progressing? Is that a fair summary of ANZ's position? Yes, I think that's a fair summary. Uh, and did you discuss the engagement of PwC with ASIC? Um, I believe ASIC were informed that PwC were, were doing the engagement. I don't think that was done before they were engaged. And um, if I can, I might. Oh, can this um, um, and that was conveyed to ASIC at around the same time as when they were engaged. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure of the timings. I, I've seen uh, evidence that they were informed. I just, uh, sorry, I can't I remember. And the, the first day. task that they did, you described a moment ago, was threefold. Can you? Um, <coughs> that was to um, to review the um, the fixes. For uh, no, it was more about the remediation. So it was more around the accuracy and validity of the assumptions underpinning the refund calculation for customers. Um, now, am I right to say that having started in, aug in August um, 2012, um, PwC remained working on this project for um, uh, for quite some time. Yes. And in fact, if I can take you to a document, um, ANZ.800.223.1041, I'll find out the um, so it's item 12. Item 12. This is a document dated the 30th of September 2012. By this stage, PwC had been engaged for over a year doing different parts of their project, weren't they? Yes. And if, if one goes to point 1044 of this document, Yes. Do you see how it appears that um, as at the 30th of uh, the 30th of September 2013 uh, various recommendations were being made by PwC do you see those there in the middle of the page? Um, yes I do. Um, was it a cause of concern that at this stage three years after uh, this issue had been identified, um, recommendations of this nature were being made? Um, these weren't recommendations so much about the refund or the fixes. They were, these were more around some of the manual processes that, that sort of sat around the, uh, the remediation approach. So things like how to deal with deceased estates, address validation, um, you know, manual payments, you know, things of that nature. I think there's a reference to some of those issues above, um, um, including deceased check, um, etc. The purpose of taking you to it, though, is to identify whether or not this is in September 2013. Um, the the process for um, the remediation occurring was still um, not resolved as at that date, was it? I think there was about 12 or so um, smaller manual processes that sat around the border um, refund and remediation calculation and payment piece. And we asked them to come and do some recommendations to make sure you know, that we were comfortable with those processes. And they provided some recommendations of further checks and balances that we should put in place. I just throw a spanner in the works, Mr. Dinelli. Is, what's the date of this document? Is it 12 or 13? 
Just went back through the transcript and. Uh, 2013, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I had a note time. of 12 and there was an earlier note in the transcript. 13. Okay. It is. Just to make that clear, that is after PwC was first engaged in August 2012. Yes. In your evidence. And PwC was still involved in aspects of that remediation program then and in fact prepared another report yes. um, on the 29th of November, and I might take you to that, ANZ.800.223.1056. Yes, I have that. Now this um, document I've um, taken you to before um, for the purpose of identifying that um, the, um, the graph at point 1071. But perhaps before I do that, could I tender the previous PwC Paper, if I may. Exhibit 1.132 ANZ 800-223-1041 PwC QA Review 30 September 2013. You ought to tender this one, which is... Uh, this one here ought to have been tendered earlier. Has it? Thank you. Yes. I don't have any further questions on that. I would like to take you to a different issue. Sure. It was tendered as Exhibit 1.128. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Now you gave evidence before um, as to when the relevant remediation <coughs> occurred. Uh, am I right to say that it was in fact in 2014 when the remediation was concluded? Uh, the remediation payments were made to customers sort of across January to April 2014. That year? Um, and the main form of communication was letters with them? Um, yes. Um, and, uh, and you deal with this at paragraph 29 of your statement. Um, some customers also got um, phone calls? Yes. As I understand it. How was it determined those which got a phone call and those which didn't? Um, the customers who got phone calls were customers who either got a sort of a large refund, so over a thousand dollars. The option was given um, to call customers who were maybe relationship managed um, customers, so um, potentially um, you know commercial banking uh, relationship customers. And I believe a number of our collections customers were also um, called, and also some of the customers who had um, previously um, you know made complaints or spoken to FOS about some of these issues. And, and if I'm um, correct in saying the it ultimately was the case that in relation to the the break free inter incorrect interest rate um, that affected ninety three thousand three hundred customer uh, customer accounts. Um, yes, I think I've said approximately 93,000. Yes, and, and that was $48 million, whereas the offsets um, were a total amount of $21.3 million. Yes. Um, and that was in Just relation to 307, approximately 308,000 customers. Yes, but effectively payments were only were made to a smaller group because of we had those thresholds around um, open and closed accounts. 
That's right. And what did you do in relation to those thresholds if they weren't satisfied? Um, so if a customer um, had an uh, error of less than $2 for an open account or less than $20 for a closed account, um, those payments were aggregated and paid across to charity and there was about $716,000. Yes, and I think that forms part of your evidence. Yes. Um, so is it right to say, therefore, that in relation to... In relation to some people who were part um, of this remediation process, they were being remediated in respect of uh, matters that had occurred as much as 10 years earlier. Um, almost 10 years, I'm just thinking the timeline, September 2003 and the offset customers. Um, yes, yes, that's fair, yes, 2014, yes. So. Customers of the bank who um, had accounts at that time were informed for the first time then with these letters at the start of 2014 that there had been, there had been um, errors in the application of uh, ANZ systems, the cause of which was that they had been overcharged interest or an offset had been not linked the effect of which was also the imposition of higher interest. When that had occurred um, over a period of, as I said, nearly 10 years, or in some cases, even more than 10 years. Yes. That's not, not good enough, is it, to have a process that is only um, uh, capable of being, or an issue that's only resolved um, after that period of time for customers? Yeah, look, I my view is that the remediation process did take too long. Um, we had not done anything like that of that nature before. It's the first time we'd done something like that and it took us longer because we were learning and we didn't have things in place like remediation frameworks or um, remediation principles. Um, but what I will say is that we certainly learnt a lot of the, as a result of the mortgages breakthrough and offset remediation program, and it has sort of formed the foundation of future remediations that we have done. Yeah, in, in fact, you, at the end of this process, um, had a, a key learnings document which was put together, didn't you? Yes. And you've, you've seen that document, have you? Uh, th there's a few, so... Okay, well, I'm taking you to one dated yep. April 2014, ANZ 800.800.223.1934. One of your colleagues... 22. Oh, 22, thank you. Have you seen that document before? Uh, yes, I have seen this. It's quite... Um, I think it's fair to say, based on your evidence, it's quite regrettable that it did take this long for customers to be um, remediated. Is that a fair analysis of what you just said? Yes. Um, It's of, if one goes to point 1952, yes. it's concerning, is it not, that there's a reference there to key learnings, which is speed of refund payments that ANZ is one of the learnings said, stagger payments to lessen the business impact versus refund all customer ASAP once payments commence. That's a matter of some concern, is it not? I'm not sh sure exactly what context they they met that when they wrote that, so... That's right. Well, it does seem to consider that a relevant factor in the remediation of customers is whether or is to consider in the course of doing the, the impact on the business, isn't it? One lens on this may be that... Um, you know, they're trying to think through, do you just do 235,000 payments on one day and is that manageable and the chance of things going wrong as opposed to actually having a pilot and then doing it over a two to I three see. month period? Although that's not what um, 
it says there, staggering payments to less than the business impact doesn't, isn't suggesting that the payments are made over uh, different days, as you say. It's uh, suggesting that other factors other than refunding all customers ASAP are relevant. Look, as I said, I can't comment on what you know the person who wrote that was thinking at If it time. was the case that it was being delayed by reference to the business impact or reputation of, of ANZ, that wouldn't be good enough, would it? No. That wouldn't be in the interest of customers. No. And it certainly wouldn't be in line with community expectations, would it? No. That's the first item on that page. Ms Stubbings, there's reference to a statute of limitations issue. Uh, whether or not there was a statute of limitations in this case uh, played no part in uh, the decisions the bank made. Um, the bank went back as far as it could based yeah. on the data it had available. Regardless of whether a statute yes. was engaged or not. The next point refers to regulator engagement and it's posed as a question, can you wait for detailed data to size the issue prior to notification? Now, it's put as a, a question, but surely in your experience and having regard to the obligations on ANZ, uh, the regulator ought to be informed as soon as it's necessary for the regulator to be informed, shouldn't it? Well, I think in this case, um, I mean, setting aside the fact that I, I feel it took longer to identify this as systemic, I mean, I think at the point they told the regulator they identified 6,000 offset accounts, obviously we had a lot more than that. You're familiar with the obligations on, um, on ANZ um, as a licensee under the Corporations Act, aren't you? Um, I have Ms. some Dutton. level of famili familiarity. Uh, the the requirements under the Corporations Act, if there's something to be notified under Section 912A, requires notifications to occur within 10 days. Are you aware of that? I am aware of that. Yes. Um, so it would seem that if um, if there was some need to inform the regulator, and I understand there was an inf the regulator was here informed in June, and I'm not dealing with that, I'm dealing with what's the subject of these key learnings. Surely the re a relevant consideration, the determinative consideration would be when ANZ is required by law to inform ASIC, wouldn't it? Look, I mean, we work with our legal and compliance teams in determining the appropriate point. But there does have to be a level of analysis done to, to try and understand what was the root cause of the issue, to what extent the period you know, extended over, you know, a sense of that some level of customer impact. Uh, if I could perhaps tender that document. Exhibit 1.133, Key Learnings Document, April 2014, ANZ 800-223-1934. There was a similar um, analysis done, what was described as a post-implementation review, and you refer to this in your statement at SMS 6. It is ANZ.800.223.1917. Um, yes, that's right. Um, and the purpose of this um, document, was it not, was to um, review the process um, and some of the, the key findings and to learn for the future, is that correct? Yes. Um, on page point one nine two one.
there is um, a series of matters which are ranked where, um, and you'll see this at the bottom, where green means a great score, yellow a good score, and focus required. Um, if it's in pink. Yes. In relation to project governance, it said if, if, that that was 8.5, which is a great score. Do you see that? Yes. And the last off point says the bottom line was very successful in difficult circumstances. The 2014 time frame committed to ASIC in early 2013 was met. Negative media. Yes. Now, that having gone through the extensions of this process and the fact that PwC um, became involved and it took um, some um, nearly four years to get to the point of the remediation, do you think that it's proper, properly described as very successful, this process? So this, um, this review was basically done from the point um, after the project reformed, effectively after that first PwC review had been done. So it was really, this is from the period, you know, October, November 2012 through to um, 2014 that this um, is referring to. Is, is the fact of no negative media a very significant factor in determining whether or not ANZ is successful or otherwise in a particular project? Um, it's, it's one of the things we want to make sure we manage the communication well, that customers feel that they're well informed. Um, you know, so that would indicate that the letters we've provided to them, you know, addressed the information that they needed. There's also, it's also on your evidence though, these, these very customers are the same customers that have had to wait 10 years for a refund of an amount they never should have paid. That's also a relevant factor, isn't it? Yes, it is a relevant factor. And that doesn't seem to be something that's the subject of um, any finding um, um, here or, or anywhere else, does it? Um, I think this is really around the project itself and how the project operated. But the project's directed at ensuring the, uh, the fair treatment of customers who have paid an amount that they never should have paid. Isn't that the position? Yes. Before I turn to the next issue, one other mark of the um, Um, of this project w would be that these sort of issues don't occur going forward, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, as your statement um, indicates, there's been a number of other issues that have arisen, haven't there, of a similar nature to that which was the subject of this, the major remediation, haven't they? Um, similar, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. During the... Uh, 137 issues, which we've just spoken about, during those 137 issues, one of the things that was considered was the likelihood of repetition of these um, problems? Yes. And that presumably would have been something that um, was of concern to ensure that it didn't happen again? Yes. And and I'm jumping to during the 137 issue, just to put this in context, but if one goes to, I'll go to this, yeah. ANZ.800.033.2545, That's tab three for you. Oh, tab three, Ms. thank you. 
And this is, or perhaps I can ask you to identify first what this document is. So this is the um, Operational Risk Executive Committee meeting uh, on the 16th of November 2012. And what does the Operational Risk Executive Committee consider? Um, so they uh, consider they consider all risk across ANZ, sort of market risk, um, operational risk. Sorry, actually, that's not right. They consider operational risk. My apologies. Um, and there's been a reference to this before and to the timing of informing this body yes. of what had occurred. And on point 2639... There's an, um, an explanation, and I won't... Um, sorry, let me just find it. Sorry, 2639. Yes. Now this, and I'm not labouring this point because I've dealt with it, but <coughs> the action that was requested of... Um, <coughs> was to endorse the risk acceptance request for an additional period of 12 months. We've dealt with the fact that there was various extensions. But if I can go down to the bottom right-hand corner, it says, post-treatment, the likelihood of a similar systemic incident occurring is expected to reduce to unlikely. Yes. Um, so one of the intentions during the 137 issues was to seek to avoid the occurrence of any related or similar issues going forward. Yes. You, uh, Commissioner, if I could, if I could, please tender that document. You've got 1.134 Operational Risk Executive Committee Agenda, 16 November, 2012, ANZ uh, 800-033-2545. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, and just dealing with um, <coughs> dealing with the level of uh, or the way that this was treated within the organisation, that was I've just taken you to something in two thousand and twelve. In your statement at SMS 2, if I could take you to that briefly. This is a document we've been to before, being yes. uh, a review um, of the project. Where am I on that page? I'm at 1968. There's a later OREC paper, April 2014. You'll see that at 1967. Yes, I can see that. And within that... Within that... It's ne uh, the next page, 1968, indicates that there's a, this is a, to be an update to OREC for noting following the completion of the OREC approved break free and offset remediation program. Can you see that? Yes, I can. And the risk of incorrect pricing on offset accounts and break free packages previously rated as extreme as ANZ was yet to complete customer remediation and repayment. Now, by this stage, then, the remediation had been made, hadn't it? Uh, yes, it was, being, it was finished in April 2014. That's right. So it's about the time of... Yes. Um, this is April 2014. Um, and the residual risk has now been reduced to medium. Do you see that? Yes. Following the implementation of all required controls, the remediation of historical issues and the payment of refunds to customers. Yes. Now, likelihood... Again, at this time, is said to be unlikely. Can you see that in brackets? Yes, I can. I'd like to deal um, with um, 
um, the 138 issue now, to which I haven't yet referred, other than in introducing it, um, for the assistance of the, the Commission, can you explain um, your evidence as to how um, this issue arose and its similarities, if any, with the issues that we've been discussing? Yep, so the, this issue arose when um, a team in our operational processing area was running some exception reporting um, to identify where customers had not received um, or may not have received um, interest rate discounts or fee waivers. And off the back of that, and that they were around those reports, I believe, between about July and November 2016, off the back of that they identified some customers who had not received um, interest rate discounts or fee waivers. Uh, then the home loan product team then ran um, sort of two further extracts and identified that there were about 1,450 customers um, through to March 2017 who had not received um, fee waivers. And then there was about 1,400 um, accounts that had not received um, interest rate discounts through to, um, I think it was July 2017. And is that, when you say they hadn't res received interest rate discounts, are you... Sorry, the appropriate interest rate the discount. Appropriate, my apologies. No, no, um, that was my fault. The appropriate discount, is that the same as the first of the two 137 issues that we discussed? Um, yes. Um, there was a... Australia Division Compliance Incident Assessment dated the 5th of October of last year in relation to this issue. It's at SMS 8. Now, by this time, you have personal knowledge of this incident, don't you? Yes, I do. Um, and um, on the first page of that document, you sorry, a call sorry, a a ANZ, sorry, ANZ. Sorry, ANZ. Eight hundred. Dot. Oh five two. Dot one three. Four five. Did for your purposes, this is SMS eight. Miss Stubbings. Yes. <clears throat> and it said there that in the second paragraph, since the completion of. Um, uh, the program. ANZ has continued to review its processes and controls. ANZ has recently identified that errors have again been occurring in relation to and then break free benefits and offset account non linkages. You see that? Yes. Now, on the next page, um, 1346. It says, this, this third paragraph, MBORP focused on the root causes and strengthening the controls and process for new break-free packages and or new lending attached to a break-free package. While all break-free package holders who were not receiving package benefits, irrespective of root cause, were remediated as part of the MBORP. It does not appear that the MBORP considered whether the setup processes for existing lending and or post-drawdown opt-in in a break-free package were resulting in errors. Why not? Um, so the MBORP, so what it says is that MBORP basically remediated all um, break-free packages at Correct. that point. Um, but the controls that were put in place were very much focused on um, new packages or new lending. Um, the controls didn't contemplate um, customers who opt in to a break-free package after drawdown or oh. two years down the track decide that they want their loan to now be a break-free package. And the reason we weren't picking those up is that they weren't a sale as such. It wasn't um, so. It wasn't generating in our exception reports. Um, it wasn't. Gen it wasn't being picked up as a sale or renewal because they were reverting to the package after that event had occurred. I, I understand, and that's consistent with what you say in your statement about how this issue arose. But it says it goes on to say in the very next sentence, the review of these processes and controls were not in scope for 
MVORP and errors have continued to occur notwithstanding the remediation. My point to you is a different one. My point to you is why in circumstances where a four-year project, almost four-year project was undertaken, did it not or was it not in its scope that errors such as these would be fixed? I can't comment on why it wasn't fixed um, back at the time. But it wasn't? No. And in fact, in fairness, then on the next page, it said, as must be the case, in the second paragraph, the identification of the above issue has highlighted that there are further issues with unlinked offset accounts that will need to be remediated, following similar issues that were remediated by MBORP in 2013 and again in 2016, home loans only. Yeah. I'm just con conscious my evidence doesn't refer to the offset linkage issue. Sorry, Ms Stubbings, I'm terribly sorry. Can you speak up just a little more? Yeah. I'm just conscious my evidence um, doesn't refer, the 138 issue doesn't refer to the offset issue. That was a, a separate line item in the misconduct um, um, and CSE no. table. I'm, I understand that. I'm asking you, though, about this. Um, I, I'm asking you how the program that was in place for that period of time didn't pick up these errors that I'm referring to. Yes, these break-free errors, you yes. mean? Yes. yes, correct. Yes. And I think it's your evidence that they weren't within scope because it didn't pick up circumstances where people swapped across from a different package, is that right? It wasn't so much a different package. It was um, if you'd already drawn down your home loan and then sort of 10 days later um, you decided, oh, actually that breakthrough package looks good, I'm going to opt into that. Um, it didn't pick that up. I understand. These errors that occurred in that you picked up here, they were errors that had occurred between the period from t July 2013 to about July 2017, weren't they? Um, yes, there's a, I think it's to March for the fee piece and July for the um, interest piece. Um, Commissioner, I think I'll be another half an hour with Ms Stubbings um, and there may be some questions in, in, in re-examination um, if that's a convenient... I think, I think it's probably better that we come back tomorrow, I'm afraid. Ms Stubbings, is that going to inconvenience you unduly? No, that, no that's fine. No problem, Commissioner. Yeah. Well, we'll adjourn until... Uh, 9.45, if you can yep. be back in no time problem. to uh, start at 09.45. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a couple of matters that I want to take up before uh, the evidence resumes. First, uh, over recent days, the Commission has published two further background papers. Number four, which is a paper uh, about Australian law regulating consumer home loans, credit cards and car loans, which has been written by uh, Jenny Patterson and Nicola Howell of Melbourne Law School. The second background paper, number five, is a Treasury paper on reforms to consumer lending. Those papers uh, have been published over the last few days. The second matter I want to take up concerns final submissions for this round of hearings. Uh, it is intended that Senior Counsel Assisting uh, will make a closing address on Friday this week, most likely Friday afternoon. In the course of that, our Council will identify issues that are seen as emerging from the hearings that have been conducted over the last uh, week and a half, by then two weeks. Ordinarily, uh, the Commission will work on the basis 
the persons having leave to appear will have one week thereafter to make written submissions. Now, because the Friday following uh, the close of this round of hearings uh, falls on Good Friday, written submissions will be due by 4 p.m. on Tuesday, 3 April 2018. You will notice the particularity of the deadline. A time is given as well as a date. The time is not simply there uh, to plump out uh, the direction. The time is there to be complied with. 4 p.m on Tuesday, 3 April. I then need to say something about uh, the length and uh, division of those submissions. First, an entity which is subject, which is the subject of one or more of the case studies examined during the hearings, may make written submissions about what findings should be made in respect of the relevant case study or studies, those submissions by the entities in effect directly concerned may not exceed 25 pages in total. In addition, so on top of uh, the written submissions about uh, by entities the subject of one or more case studies. So in addition, uh, all persons having uh, leave to appear in this round of sittings may make written submissions on other issues raised by council assisting and those submissions again, may not exceed 25 pages in length. The third matter I want to raise concerns the next sittings, as has been uh, announced on the website. The next sittings will commence on 16 April 2018 and will focus on financial planning and wealth, uh, the wealth management industry. The fourth matter I wish to raise is this. <clears throat> At the end of evidence given by Ms Forbes yesterday, I drew attention to the fact that she had been asked a question premised on ANZ not having produced an email string sent in response to a letter from ASIC dated 10 January uh, 17. See transcript 647 lines 8 to 20. The email string was dated 19 January 17 and is exhibit 1.124 comprising uh, ASIC 0012, 0003, 1696. Inquiries were made last night. Uh, amongst the uh, Commission staff and records. And those inquiries appear uh, to confirm that that email string was not produced. Attention was given to notice to produce NP078, category A3 of which required production of any documents which record communications between ASIC and ANZ concerning the incident. The incident, as appeared from other parts of that notice to produce, was identified as item 153 in the second table to ANZ's response to the Commission's letter of 2nd February uh, 2018. Uh, that item, item 153, is Exhibit 1.123. Dr. Collins, is there anything you wish to say? Yes, thank you. 
Commissioner. Uh, those instructing us have investigated that matter overnight as a matter of priority, and I can inform you, Commissioner, that a letter has been sent this morning uh, to those assisting the Commission setting out the results of that investigation. Uh, the ANZ accepts that the document in question falls within category A3 of notice NP078. Uh, in short compass, uh, the matter was reviewed but inadvertently misclassified as not responding to that category. The email in question formed part of a chain of emails. Other parts of the chain were produced in response to the uh, to notice NP078. Those matters are set out in the letter which has been directed to the solicitors assisting the Commission this morning. Uh, on behalf of the ANZ Bank, I apologise for the omission and assure you, Commissioner, that steps are being put in place uh, to ensure that this kind of omission does not recur. Again, it is a matter for you whether you answer this question. Has any inquiry been made uh, about whether there was any other omission other than that which was identified? As I say, whether you answer that question is a matter for you. In so far as we have been able to investigate the matter overnight, the answer to the Commissioner's question is no. Uh, but can I say, Commissioner, that those instructing us are taking the matter um, um, most seriously and giving it anxious further attention. Thank you, Dr Collins. Is there anything else you want to add? No? no. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes, thank you. Mr. Donnelly, it seems to me that uh, it may be desirable that uh, uh, notice to produce NP78 uh, be tendered. Uh, it would become exhibit, I think, 1.135 uh, if my uh, records are right. Is that so? I think uh, exhibit 1.135. Five will be noticed to produce uh, NP 078 directed to uh, ANZ. If it would assist you, Commissioner, the uh, the court book number is RCD.0002.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.
statement, ANZ.800.223.155, Yes. Given that notice was given to ASIC on the 5th of October, that's approximately three months after you found out, call the date July. I understand your evidence is that you discovered some earlier issues even earlier than that, but you waited at least three months to tell ASIC, didn't you? We were still investigating the matter in terms of the sizing of it. So um, once we got to the point of having a you know, fact base around the sizing and the customer impact and the dollar impact, that was the point that we uh, then worked with compliance and our legal team to um, prepare a compliance impact assessment and then inform ASIC of the matter. Um, on the previous occasion that you, or on the previous occasion that I've taken you to where you informed ASIC on the 17th of June, um, that letter, which I won't take you to, but that was, um, said to be, we, I quote, we believe that these matters have the potential to be reportable under section 912D of the Corporations Act. That language doesn't appear in um, this letter that I'm taking you to, does it? Uh, no, it doesn't. Are you familiar with the obligations upon ANZ to inform ASIC of matters, Ms Hubbings? Uh, I have a you know, high level of familiar, familiar sorry, um, familiarity, <laughs> yes. Um, are, are you aware of ANZ statutory obligation under section 912D of the Corporations Act to make written reports to ASIC in certain circumstances? Um, again, I have a, you know, a high level of awareness. Uh, and are you aware that that written report has to be given if there's a breach or a likely breach of any obligation set out in section 912A of the Corporations Act? Uh, yes, I'm aware of that. Um, where the breach is significant. Yes. Um, did you did you at the time turn your mind to this issue, Ms. Stubbings? In terms of whether it was significant. Yes. Um, look, I personally didn't. Um, you know, that's something we work with our compliance and legal people on. But I mean, obviously, in this case, we had two thousand, you know, nine hundred odd customers that were impacted. Are you aware that? One of the factors in determining whether or not something is significant is to have regard to matters such as the number and or frequency of similar previous breaches. Are you aware of that? Uh, yes, I am. And, and in this case, given your evidence about item 138 and its similarity to 137, that would suggest, would it not, that this was a very significant matter? I'm not necessarily saying it wasn't significant. In the context of section 912D, I can't really comment on it from that perspective. But in any case, you're aware that there's a 10-day um, a period that notification has to be given to ASIC? Uh, yes, from once um, compliance has been engaged, yes. Uh, and Sorry, what, uh, what do you mean by from once compliance has been engaged? Uh, it's my understanding um, of the regulatory guideline around um, the ASIC reporting that it's a 10-day period. Okay. Can I take you to, if I may, um, for your assistance, Ms Stubbings, it's tab 21, ANZ.800.223.1858. In, in fact, for the operator. The offset remediation uh, project summary. Oh, was that? Sorry, my. Sorry, I'll give. You, it's not that document. It's RCD. I'm sorry. Have you found it, Miss Stubbings, in your materials? Tab twenty-one of your. Oh, no, I think it might be a separate document that you've been given. Um, in, in tab 21, I have the no, offset. No, it's, it's not that document. It okay. might be a separate document that you've been given just for your convenience so that you can read Oh, this, this document here, do you mean? The, yes. The Corporations a, Act? Yes. Have you got a doc ID for it, please? Yes, I do. Uh, it's RCD.0022. Dot zero 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 one dot zero zero nine zero. Sorry, Mr. Nanai, am I is this the document you yes, want me is. to look it's at? The Corporations yeah. Act. Sorry, thank you. And if I can go to 
um, section 912D. Well, we're, into, we're into the NCCP Act. So yeah, CD, uh, the DOC ID, I think, is not right. Uh, I think it was 0190, not 0090. I take responsibility for that. I'm sorry about that, Commissioner, Ms Stubbins. So then 0190. I don't have any numbers. Just on don't worry, Ms Stubbings. We're all at yes. uh, sea at the moment. Just uh, <laughs> we'll get there. I can see the shore, and <laughs> it um, is now up, and I do apologise. Um, and if what you've got before you in written form is section, some sections of the Corporations Act, I want to, would like to go to 912D, which. Um, is at point zero two zero nine. Yes. Uh, and this is the provision to which we've been referring. A financial services licensee must comply with subsection one B if the licensee breaches or is likely to breach. And then it sets out um, sets out. Um, a number of obligations, and if one goes to the next page, and specifically to 1B, it's there that one finds the financial services licensee must, as soon as practicable and in any case within 10 business days after becoming aware of the breach or likely breach mentioned in subsection 1, lodge a written report on the matter with ASIC. Do you see that? Yes, I do. There's no reference there to awaiting discussion with compliance, is there? Uh, not, not here, no. And in relation to this issue, um, am I right to say that as of today, ANZ is still working through this issue? Um, yes, we're still working through the remediation of that issue, yes. That's correct. Um, and work has started. Yes. But there's a report that I would like to take you to, um, which is ANZ dot, sorry, which is tab 21 for you, and ANZ dot 800 dot 223 dot 1858. Yes. Th this is a document that I'm sure you've seen before, um, and it was actually dated last month, the 20th of February 2018. Do you see that? I do, yes. And what is this document? Uh, this is about the offset issue. It's not about the break-free issue. I see. Uh, but part of the 138 issue? It's not part of the 138 issue. Okay. Um, what issue then does this concern? Uh, this is a separate issue, I believe, in the table we provided on the 13th of February. I see. Um, can I in any case ask you um, a question about it? Um, this is um, a process that requires remediation, does it? Uh, yes, it does. Okay, and if one goes to point one eight five eight, sorry, one um, eight five nine. Yes. <coughs> um, and the. Am I right to say then that item one three eight that we've been discussing is two rather than three and four? Uh, n no. Can you assist me as to which um, of the remediation, the various remediations that are going, uh, that are being conducted, this paper deals with? Uh, so, item one in BORP is the item we discussed yesterday. That was the one three seven issue. Yes. The number two here. Um, this relates to the item. I think it's C in my statement. Yes. Or item. Item C in C. my statement. Yes. And then three and f uh, f item four is item D in my statement. Yes. Item three is not uh, questions I was asked about in my statement. I see. Uh, and if you go to um, one eight six two. Referring to this remediation um, that's occurring, do you see how uh, do you see how there's a reference there to the project team must identify how to stop the bleed on both of these issues prior to refunding customers? Yes, I see that. Um, once again, is this 
like the document we went to yesterday, an indication that uh, that perhaps the uh, refunding of customers isn't put um, as high as a priority as ANZ as it should be? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. It's part of any remediation process. You actually have to stop the issue because otherwise it's very hard to remediate customers if you've still got customers that are being impacted by it. Right. So what we have done is for the customers who are impacted by this, we have linked their offset accounts. Uh, what we haven't done is remediated them for you know, the interest benefit they've missed out on in that period. Um, are the customers aware of, uh, of the issue that's arisen? Uh, they may not be aware yet. So is it your evidence that you've taken some steps but the customers aren't aware of, um, of the issue at all at this stage? Uh, so we've, as I said, we've linked their offset accounts. They are now getting their benefits from the point we've linked them onwards, um, but they will need to be remediated and um, funds paid a cost to them for the fact that they um, missed out on those benefits but, over that period. Okay, so sitting here now in relation to these issues, um, the customers haven't been informed yet? Uh, I, don't, I don't believe so. Um, and it's still unclear exactly when they will be informed, is that right? Uh, we are working through the remediation as we speak. But there isn't a date yet for when they will be informed, is there? Uh, in terms of making payments, um, our current schedule has that happening before Christmas. So, in relation to something that was discovered when, Ms Stubbings? Uh, well, we've talked about March and July 2017. I see. Can I deal can I, with... Can I just get a better grip than I have at the moment on the chronology you've just been outlining? We begin the chronology, do we, in March, July, March and July 17, where uh, an issue is... Or two separate issues are identified, is yes, that right? Yes, it's a little bit confusing because those are actually the break-free issues. Right. This, is, this is an offset issue. So, sorry... Actually, it's a good point, my correction. This relates to the period up to March 2017 for the offset issue. I see. So the offset issue, um, when do I start the chronology running? I, I, I want to try to get in my head yeah. the, the chronology that uh, is relevant. What's the first relevant entry in that chronology, so, do you so say, the period Ms. For, for this issue, yes. um, that wasn't covered in my statement, was effectively it's really from January 2016 onwards that these um, un linkages errors would have occurred because of the item we have that's C in my statement, we would have fixed all the unlinked um, offsets up until that point, which was January 2016. So this relates to the period January 2016 through to March 2017. I see. And um, yes, so we've gone through the process of linking all those offset accounts for customers who are impacted by this. But again, just as I say, I'm, I'm anxious to be uh, understand the chronology. The errors uh, or failure of linkage uh, occurs between January 16 and about March 17, is yep. that right? Yes. On discovery, the linkages are uh, made? Yes. And in what sort of time period are we talking? Uh, look, I don't know exactly by what time they were linked, but I have been informed that those accounts have all been linked. Are we talking, though, days, weeks, months? Uh, are you able to give any look, estimate? It would, it would be months, yes. So over a period of some months, yes. uh, links that should have been made but had not were made? Yes, once the item had been discovered, yes. Stopping the clock at that point, yes. has the customer been told anything? Uh, the customer hasn't been told yet, no. What's the next step in the chronology? Yep. Uh, the, the links are then yep. made. What happens next? Yeah, so we've, bu we've built a new sort of tool to pick up these um, linkage issues because clearly they have, you know, persisted. So have we, we've built that out so we can stop the issue reoccurring. We are now going through the process of getting the data uh, to um, refund uh, these customers. And has the customer yet been told? No. And... Uh, do you are you able to offer any expectation or prediction about when the customer uh, or customers are likely to be told? 
Uh, so the intent is that that will be done, uh, you know, prior to Christmas was our timeline. So Christmas 18? Yes. In respect of events uh, dating back uh, occurring to between January, January 16. 16 and March yes. 17? Yes. Do you regard the time uh, thus identified as satisfactory or unsatisfactory? Look, I think we, I mean, we're definitely focused on the fact that we've had, you know, this re recurrence and um, we needed to build a new tool to enable us to manage that um, so we can stop that happening and impacting other customers. And that's definitely been a focus. We've also been very focused on making sure those customer accounts have been linked so we can minimise the impact to the customer. Um, and yeah, now we really need to, um, you know, take steps to uh, remediate and refund those customers. Just to round off this, this attempt at understanding, do you yet have uh, an estimate uh, of how much money we are talking about for the customers as a group? Yeah. So for the 2,800 2, odd that were identified through to March 2017, the estimates we had were about one and a half million. Yes, Mr. Dinelli. Thank you. <coughs> there are a number of issues, as your evidence has shown. Can I move? Um, uh, before I do that, I, I ought tender that the document to which I've just taken you, if I may. That's Exhibit uh, uh, 1.136 will be Offset Remediation Project Summary 20 February 2018, ANZ 800-223-1858. Thank you, Commissioner. The next issue that I'd like to deal with, and I um, will try to deal with these remaining issues and then have a couple of questions by way of summary, but is item 135, which is the language we've been using, which was an interest rate margin discount issue. Sure. I mean, am I right that this happened because an operation, operational processing team in Bangalore made a decision, um, made a decision to process um, in relation to certain interest rate discount um, requests that weren't properly marked, the result of which was um, that they weren't um, correctly actioned, is that correct? Yes, that's effectively correct. So how did that happen, Ms Tubby? So from May 2016, um, sort of through to December 2016, there'd been a 50% increase in um, interest rate uh, dis discount requests uh, from customers with existing home loans. So prior to that period, uh, the team had been doing about 8,000 a month in March and April, and it went up to uh, over 12,000 in May and June. And as a result, um, you know, to save time, they uh, made a decision to not mark as closed all those open um, interest rate discount requests. Did, did ANZ have processes in place requiring the active marking of these requests as completed or closed? Yes. And if they did, why didn't they work? Uh, well, as I said, the team took a decision to try and work through the volumes in the interest of, you know, dealing, you know, helping our customers. And um, unfortunately, as a result of that, it meant that some customers' um, interest rate discount was not applied to their home loans. But it's, it's fair to say that this was another failure of process, wasn't it, at ANZ in relation to item 135? Yes. And perhaps if you can assist me in terms of um, the timing um, of this, um, when did you say um, the issue was discovered by the person in Bangalore? Uh, that was in December 2016. Uh, and, um, and I understand that it was resolved relatively quickly? Uh, yes. Um, and then this issue was reported to the Australian Division um, of the Risk Committee, is that right? Yes, in April. Um, in April? Yes, 2017, yes. By that time you'd already identified the cohort of home loan accounts that were impacted, hadn't you? Yes. Um, you'd already obtained data to determine the size of the customer detriment? Yes. Um, yet the compliance incident was only made on the 19th of April. Um, some, again, some um, four or five months later before uh, a view was formed that it was important to tell that risk committee, is that right? 
Uh, it, the way the risk committee works is they, they meet monthly, but um, one of their meetings um, is on credit risk items, and then the second month it's on operational risk type of items. So depending on the cycle of that risk committee, um, that would have impacted the timing of when this was presented. But on, even on that analysis, there would have been um, at least two meetings that it could have been um, produced at earlier. Look, possibly they don't tend to meet in January, so um, I can't comment. I don't know exactly which cycle they were working See? through. Why does it say, if one goes to SMS 13, why does it say that it was reported on the 21st of February 2017? Um, I can't comment on that. Um, your evidence was that this happened back in, in December, wasn't it? Yes. Well, we first became aware of it in December. Yes. It wasn't until a couple of months later that we had a good view of the sizing and the impact. Again, it doesn't, um, it doesn't seem to have been much urgency in bringing it, though, to the attention of the Australian Div Division Compliance um, Committee, was there? I understand that it was certainly raised with the operational compliance um, you know, teams and um, with the operational leadership team. What do you think the reputational impact is of something like this for ANZ? Oh, look, I mean, clearly there's a failing of process here. And, um, you know, I think from my perspective, um, you know, that the reporting that we had on the team and, the, you know, and how they were performing relative to their service standards was based on closed accounts, not open accounts. And if we'd had reporting based on open accounts, we would have identified this issue, you know, significantly earlier. And that, to me, is sort of, you know, really the core of what sort of failed here. Um, do you think it's accurate to say that the reputation impact to ANZ is low as a result of this incident? Um, look, I think, you know, when we go through and assess these types of things, we look at um, the time period it persisted for. We is look it, at is the it low? Is it low with Stubbings? I think it's, these things are relative, so, I mean, the, as I said, there were failings here and there was a failings of process. Um, if I may say, though, another one, wasn't it, Ms Stubbings? Uh, yes, it's, it's and that's a relevant incident here, yes. Um, and if one goes to, um, and I'm sorry it's come down the document, but if I take you to, um, back to that document, which is ANZ 800 052 one four six one at one four six five. Do you happen to know what the tab number uh, yes, is? Yes, sorry, it's um, SMS thirteen. Oh, sorry, thank you. It was the document yes, we the were in. Yes, the Yeah. In fact, there you see that when this report was made on one four six five, it says reputation impact to ANZ low. Yes, I see that. Did that inform at all why, again, it took so long to um, begin putting the correct interest rates in place? Uh, I mean, I actually think we agree on that. So as soon as we found out, we, you know, we, we sized it, we obtained the data and started the process immediately to um, correct those customers and refund them. Um, when is it, on your evidence, when did you... Um, when did you apply the correct interest rates? So that was over the period June to September, and then we um, made refunds to customers in the last week of September, and letters were sent to customers in the first week of October. So unlike the example was... I'm speak sorry, you, you dropped your voice. Sorry. Refunds were made in September? Um, yes, so refunds were made in the last week of September, Yes. and uh, letters were sent to customers in the first week of October. Yes. Uh, and interest rates were corrected between June and September of um, 2017. Did you turn your mind to um, 912D again in this context? Um, I wasn't in the meeting when the compliance impact assessment uh, discussion yes. was, was raised. Um, do you know what, they dis uh, what was determined? Uh, yes, I do. So they determined it wasn't significant. I see. Um, so you, you can't comment on whether or not they had regard to the number and frequency of similar past breaches? Uh, I don't think we've had a similar breach of this nature. Um, I, I do know they had regard to uh, the time period that it persisted over, which was six months, 
um, the number of customers impacted, the dollar impact, which um, has been about $980,000. Um, I'm sorry, 980? Yeah, 980, yes, Commissioner. And number of customers? Uh, 1,860. That decision as to whether or not to inform MASIC was reconsidered about two months later, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Were you part of that decision? No, I wasn't. Is it common to reconsider whether or not um, whether or not a disclosure should be made? Well, I think based on um, you know further information, um, I, I think that the team wanted to make sure that we were still comfortable that that was the right decision. Uh, but the same conclusion was reached, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. Um, and, it and the customers have now been remediated in relation yes, to the, this yes. issue, but it remains the case that ASIC hasn't been notified of it. Um, that's right. Can I go to item 134? Sorry, can I just understand who makes the decision, uh, report or not report to ASIC? At, yep. at what level or what body within yep. the bank makes that decision of report or no report? Yeah, so that's with sort of key business stakeholders, sort of, um, you know, people at my sort of level, and then we do that with our Australia Division compliance folks. So um, with the head of uh, Australia Division compliance, we would make that decision. Commissioner, if I may tender that. Uh, sorry, that document is actually. It's in, uh, um, it's, in it's SMS 13. Apologies. Um, can I ask now um, about the last two issues? Or first, if I can deal with item 134. Sorry, is item 134 one, item 134, C? which you deal with at paragraph 89? Yes. Or in fact, you. Um, yes, it is at paragraph 89. This is the one that you referred to as C before? Y yes. Um, and this was an issue that was persisting from January 2013 to January 2016, whereby offset accounts were not linked. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Uh, forgive me, of course, but that's, of course, the very same issue that we've dealt with in relation to some of the other issues, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, and your evidence is that the coding instructions um, in your evidence at paragraph 94 is that the coding instructions in the macro were amended so that the customer with more than one eligible home loan and an unlinked offset account were able to be identified and passed through the processing team for linking? Yes, so in all cases, the macro wasn't identifying uh, where a, um, there was more than one eligible home loan for the offset account to be linked to. It, it, the fact that, that coding, those coding instructions were changed, and it appears were changed relatively um, quickly, <coughs> suggests that before that, do I take it that there was nothing in place to deal with this issue? Uh, look, before that we weren't aware it was an issue. Now this issue was again, um, this issue was identified in September or October of 2015, is that right? Yes. And again, well, on this occasion, um, the Australia Division Risk Committee was informed in April 2016. Is that right? Yes. Um, and look, the reason being, in, that was when we first got a sense that there was potentially a problem. So um, we've been doing some decommissioning work in, um, in around, uh, let me just check the date. Um, I think it was, yes, September, October 2015, and we identified a cohort of customers that didn't have um, their offset linked to a home loan. We then spent, you know, about three or four months getting the data that we needed to run that and cross our entire offset population to determine to what extent more broadly uh, was that an issue. I understand that, and I understand that you commenced the home loan reconstructions in March 2016, and in fact yes. you sent letters soon after. Yes. My point is this though, yet still at this point, this significant issue, another offset issue arises, yet you don't report this to the Australian Division Risk Committee until April 2016. Yes, so I don't think it was really until February slash March that we had a good view on the number of customers. So on this occasion, it wasn't because there wasn't a meeting. On this occasion, it was just because you didn't know what to report to the Australian Division Risk Committee until February or March. Is that your Yeah, evidence? we were working through the data to determine um, to what extent across our offset portfolio had this been a broader issue. And then, um, you know, I think we had a view on that by February. And again, it would have been impacted by the timing of of the Australia Risk Committee and what um, various forum was on. 
but you were paying refunds to people before you'd even told the Australian, um, before you'd even told the Australian Division Risk Committee, weren't you? Uh, we started reconstructing the accounts in March. That's right. Um, and if I rec um, and your evidence though is also that some that those um, refunds and correspondence to um, affected customers occurred as early as March 2016. Yes, that's right. What's the Australian Division Risk Committee meant to do at ANZ? Um, so Australia Div the Australia Division Risk Committee has oversight of the risks for the Australia Division, so our um, credit risk, operational risk. Risks of uh, processing errors that have gone on for, um, for years? Uh, yes, they have oversight of those types of things, yes. Yet this, and I think this is the fourth of the issues we've dealt with, although we also went into another one, yet this happening in, Mar in on your evidence, February or March 2016, sorry, if I could withdraw that, on your evidence, this issue was um, discovered in late 2015, yet you didn't go to the Australian Division Risk Committee until April 2016. Yeah, there was a smaller cohort of customers we identified at that point. It wasn't until we'd done the analysis across our entire offset population, and particularly because that was a different product set from what the first cohort had been identified, we uh, were trying to understand that. Uh, and the only information that you gave to ASIC in relation to this was your colleague, Ms Edelman, rang up ASIC, didn't she? She did, yes. Um, but there was no written notification given? Uh, that's right. Ms Dubbins, can I ask you, what you uh, quickly about what you raise at paragraph 105? Yes. Am I right to understand that in the course of preparing your statement you've identified that there was an issue um, in relation to the remediation proce process in, this, in relation to this very issue? Yes. So a further issue arose by reason of preparing this statement? Yeah, it's not so much a further issue arose, it was more when the remediation was done. Um, the data that was taken uh, was based on all open accounts as at January, January 2016. And um, we have identified that it did not pick up customers who'd closed their accounts between January 2013 and January 2016. So the process that you had in place to resolve this very issue didn't pick up those closed accounts? Yes. Um, and you realised it when you prepared this very statement for this Royal Commission? Yes. And so that's another issue that now is the subject of, um, is the subject of uh, a process requiring remediation at ANZ, isn't it? I, I wouldn't call it another issue. It's part of this issue. It just wasn't identified at that point in time. Do you see time. the issues as separate issues or all as one issue? Uh, I see this, this, uh, the fact that this is all part of the same issue. The last issue that I'd like to raise is that which we've described as, or you've described in your statement as um, item 151. That's item D. It is item D. Yes. Um, can you explain the nature of this issue in relation to what's described as backdated offset transactions? Yes. So. Um this involves how our various, um, we, we have a core system and it has a couple of subsystems, so one for our lending accounts and one for our offset accounts. And the way that the two systems have worked together has meant that in certain scenarios, um, customers have not received all the offset benefits they were entitled to. And so for the backdated transaction issue, the way our loan um, system works, it recognises um, transactions and calculates balances on a daily basis, whereas the offset subsystem recognises transactions and calculates uh, balances on a business day basis. Um, now this issue, um, or, or can you tell the Commission when this issue was um, uh, was first discovered? So um, it was first raised as a possible issue by ANZ Technology in um, September 2014. Well, that's not quite right, is it? It's actually as early as um, as early as 2011 
the issue was there was certainly reference to the possibility of this issue, wasn't yeah. there? I don't think it was raised as an issue as such. Well, it was it certainly discussed in the design of the IMBORP. But it, so, and I, I'd like to take you to that. If one goes to SMS, if you if you if you go kindly to SMS B, eighteen B, I'm sorry, which is. ANZ.800.321.0011. Sorry, I don't have the um, the numbering on my pages. SMS 18B. It, sh it should be on yours. In your Just trying to find it. That's okay. Yes, I have that. And if one, um, or perhaps I can ask you what um, this is a meeting agenda for? Uh, I believe it was a meeting agenda for the um, import became known as import. It, it was previously called the Mortgage Compliance Project. So this is effectively the Mortgages Break Free and Offset Remediation Project. It changed its name. I see. Um, and um, you weren't involved at this time? No, I wasn't. Um, if you go to uh, point zero zero one nine, please. <coughs> um, which I think you'll find is about the sixth page of your document. Yes. Um, and it, the top word is rate reductions. Can you see that? That's yes, I can see that. Thank you. Can I take you down to the? First stop point, the project manager, uh, the first stop point at about three quarters of the way down the page, the project manager presented the following. Do you see that? Yes. There, the project manager in the course of preparing what you've described is what became the remediation project for the first issue that we discussed Sorry, yesterday. Sorry, I'm just, I still can't find, are you saying where it says the project manager advised standard practice? No. Um, so this is... Um, you got a, a heading item three, interest overcharge yes, calculation. Yes, I do have immediately that. Immediately below yeah. that, is it, Mr Donnelly? Yes, oh, that's right. Uh, my apologies, thank you. Right. The project manager presented the following. This is a similar issue to item number two, but he goes on to say, the project calculates the interest on the actual balance on the date or dates the account is in error. It does not take into account transaction, sorry, it does not take into, I think it's account, transactions made in the future and backdated to a prior date. In other words, it takes into account transactions made on the date of the transaction as opposed to the previous effective dates. Now, I can't quite understand that, but is that the very issue that we are dealing with as that subsequently became item 151? So I think what the project is talking about there is the calculation engine that they have built yes. and whether they built in, build in this concept of um, backdating transactions, which is effectively enabling uh, the likes of loan accounts to be, um, you know, any transactions on a Saturday or Sunday or whatever, whatever okay. it may be. So back at the time of this meeting, okay, this is before the um, committee has changed name to become the um, MBORP, this, so July 2011, the very issue that's come up now six years later was something that at least was on the radar of those that were designing the very fix yes. at, at that time. Yes. Yet ANZ didn't put in the relevant fix back in 2011, so six years later this issue actually comes to fruition? I think it was on their radar. I don't think they were necessar necessarily saying it was an issue as such. I think what they were saying is they weren't intending to replicate what happened in the production environment into their refund calculation for this element. Uh, and I think you gave evidence before, um, consistently with your statement, that the issue was raised by ANZ Technology in about September 2014. Yes. Um, I'm not going to take you to it. It was also raised in 2013. Um, so it was raised on a number of occasions. And it appears that around September 2014, the issue was referred to an external firm for legal advice 
and in a necessary further investigation. Is that right? Yes. How long, and I don't want you to tell me what uh, that advice was, but how long did uh, that firm take to get back to ANZ about this issue? Uh, we received that advice back in May 2016. So another 18 months went by um, between September 2014 and when that advice was received in May 2016, didn't that, it? That's right, yes. Has ASIC been informed about this issue? Uh, yes, ASIC has been informed about this issue. And when did, um, did ANZ inform ASIC? Uh, ASIC were informed on the 16th of October 2017. Um, and can I just can I recap so I can understand uh, so I can understand your evidence? You accept that in 2011, in the agenda that I took you to, it was it might have been my words, but I think you accepted them. It was on the radar of the committee right back in 2011. I don't necessarily think it was on a radar as an issue. It was just in terms of the calculation and how they were going to apply that to the mortgages and break-free um, remediation. But it was something that was, well, I won't verbal you, it's something that was known by those... There was awareness, yes. Thank you. Uh, and, and then, as I said, it, uh, your evidence was that ANZ Technology raised in September 2014. It then went to a law firm. That took 18 months. May 2016. You make then a um, notification to ASIC on the 16th of October 2017. Yes. Can I take you to SMS, your SMS 19, which is ANZ.800.0. Zero seven seven dot one one eight zero. Yes, so the so the asset letter. Is this the letter dealing with? Is this the letter dealing with this issue? Uh, this is the letter that was sent to ASIC, Yes. Dealing with this issue. Yes. Under the heading nature of the issue, it says ANZ has undertaken proactive systems testing on the expected benefits of offset arrangements. Do you see that? Yes. That's misleading to say proactive, isn't it? Well, we were doing some analysis around how our um, systems operate in relation to our terms and conditions. Well, you weren't being very proactive if you'd known about this issue, known about this issue since 2011, were you? Well, I guess it was something that we had done, um, you know, as part of that review. But the issue within ANZ was known to it for many years prior. It uh, wasn't. I think what I'd said is awareness. We had awareness, awareness, yes. And um, I, as I said, I, there was not acknowledgement. It was an issue at that point. But ANZ, well, even if you assume that seven to, on your evidence, September 2014 is when ANZ technology raised it, even then, it's wrong to say, isn't it, that ANZ was undertaking proactive systems testing? You, yes, you could take that lens. Well, in fact, it was misleading ASIC. It was saying to ASIC, we're being proactive about these issues, we're dealing with them, when in fact ANZ wasn't dealing with them. I think we were proactively certainly reviewing our terms and conditions and how our systems operated at that point. Uh, now, those who've been affected by item, this, this particular issue, how many customers have been affected by it? Uh, we haven't um, identified yet how many customers have been aff uh, affected. And the number of accounts? I uh, haven't been able to uh, identify that yet either. What we have been able to identify is the types of transactions. And there's a lot of complexity that underpins those transactions. So it's, 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 it's a very transactional level issue as opposed to it, something being wrong with an account um, in, the, in this case. Yes, I, I understand that and I understand that to be your evidence uh, about the, when you described the, the backdating. Yes. Um, is there any timeline for remediation in relation to this issue? Um, again, um, I believe we're working through to try and have this resolved by um, Christmas. Um, and how much remediation will, um, do you estimate 
will be the subject of this particular issue? Look, we're still sizing it. I think we've provided some initial estimates of around about, you know, 13 to 15 million, but it's still being sized. So 13, 13 to 15? 13 to 15, did yes. you say? Yes, I did. Yeah. Thank you. I haven't been keeping a running total, Ms Stubbings, so forgive me. But the various matters you've spoken about in yes. your evidence have led to various sums of remediation. Yes. Have you done the total yeah. uh, in your head? Sure. I mean, certainly, look, the ones that we have paid out uh, have been about, of, of the ones that are in my evidence, are about 75 million. Um, but uh, we are yet to pay out, obviously, on item D and uh, the second break free issue. Um, now, they're the ones that are in your, your evidence. Sorry, can I just, uh, the last two you mentioned, not yet paid out, are estimated at, in the one case, 13 to 15. Yes. In the other case? Uh, it was about 2.8 million were our current estimates. So, round numbers, 90 million uh, all told, is that right? Uh, 75 plus 13 to 15 plus yes. 2.8, yes, yes. if we said 90, correct, to the nearest yes. decade, as it were. Yes. Yes. <coughs> They're the issues that you dealt with in your statement. Um, can you assist the Commission <coughs> by informing it how much has been um, paid by ANZ itself in relation to remediation of customers um, over over the past 10 years? Uh, so we have called out um, that there's been at least $130 million um, in addition to the items that are in my statement. Um, and does that include those, is that only remediation that's actually been paid? Uh, that's remediation that's been paid, yes. So you would have to add to that, at the very least, the and perhaps other items, but at the very least you'd have to add the two items that we've just referred to? Well, that's what I was saying. This is distinct from the items in my statement. Yes. So it's 130 plus 75 plus 13 to 15 plus 2.8. Do I yes. capture yes. that? Yes, yes, you have. For these issues to have occurred and to have occurred so often and in respect of so many ANZ customers is, is, all, is certainly unsatisfactory, isn't it? Yes. Um, and in fact, it demonstrates that there are issues within ANZ in relation to the processing the processing of uh, data and customer um, information in relation to their home loan accounts, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've called out in our submission that, you know, delivering the standard of um, banking financial services that customers, you know, do expect as, of us had, has led to a level of complexity in our systems and processes and that that has contributed contributed to these issues. And that, but that, you're putting this complexity... Just a moment, Mr uh, Donnelly, what it's led to Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, what it's led to is that customers have been charged the wrong amount of interest on their home loan. Yes. And in round numbers, uh, it's of the order of 220 million. So can I just correct you, Commissioner, on that? Yes, so, of course. So the 130 million is not just in relation to home loan items? Yes. So um, that's in relation to uh, various items in the 13th of February submission. Yes. Yes. So, but the, if, if we confine our attention to the 90 million, yes. uh, that's 90 million uh, attributable to uh, amounts wrongly charged in respect of interest uh, on home loans. Is yes, that right? interest, uh, there's, there's a little bit in there around fees, um, but yes, interest as well. The fees, is that a material contributor no, to the 90? it's a relatively small part. So, I, I keep muttering to people I've got to end up writing something about this, uh, Ms Stubbings. Uh, at the end of it, if I took as a 
an indication uh, of the size of the problem, approximately 90 million. Am I in error? Uh, that, um, if, if you that, think I am, please say so. Th that is to do with the items that have been called out in my statement. Yes. Uh, there are possibly other items in the table that may relate to home loans. I just haven't um, yes. looked at that. Yes, thank you. I put to you yesterday that the fix of these various things over the years has been a band-aid fix rather than a proper fix. Isn't that an accurate description, Ms Stubbings? Uh, no, I think we've put, uh, we've certainly put in quite a few system fixes. Um, so we've put system, system fixes uh, into um, what will be our strategic home loan origination system. So we have built into that system all the parameters around loading interest rate discounts, all the parameters around um, offset linkages, and all the parameters around the population of break-free forms. Now, we are moving, we, we've said in our submission that a really critical thing for us is to move it. We've got three loan, home loan origination systems. We're moving to one. Uh, and we're targeting, uh, that's meant to be in November. And, um, you know, those, those core system parameters and automation are sitting in that system. But these problems have kept on happening, haven't they? Yes. Yes, sir. And that falls short of what your customers expect of you, doesn't it? Yes. And what community expectations would be of ANZ. <laughs> yes. Do you accept also that it uh, amounts to uh, not providing the financial services efficiently, honestly and fairly? I'm, I'm not sure I'm the right person to have a view on that. I mean, I certainly... Uh, you know, so uh, yeah, I'm not asking you for a legal, legal opinion. opinion in the end. Yeah. If there's going to be one, I'll have to express yeah. it. But, but, yeah. uh, you're the relevant bank executive. Sure. Uh, do you think uh, it is providing the financial services uh, efficiently, honestly, and fairly uh, look, if, I... if the customers charge the wrong interest rate? Yeah. Look, I think if the customers charge the wrong interest rate, then that is, a, that is not a good outcome for a customer. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. No further. Yes. Um, can I just pursue that a moment, Ms Stubbings? The questions I've asked you uh, have treated uh, a number of separate events as leading to a result which I've described yes. uh, with a single expression, being charged the wrong interest rate. Yes. At least to that extent, would you accept that the various matters of which you have spoken are events uh, that uh, have uh, some similarities? Sorry, Commissioner, just so I understand your question, that, that the fact that we've had some recurrences, do you mean, in terms of similarities? Or? Uh, we, we've spoken of a number of separate events. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And uh, you've spoken of uh, identifying, in effect, particular reasons for each of the particular events. Is that fair? Yes. What I'm uh, uh, searching for uh, is whether you can describe uh, the separate events as having similarities between them. Oh, look, I think each event has had an element of, you know, a system or process failing. Because a question that I may have to look at uh, is how, if at all, Section 912A and 912D of the Corporations Act uh, were engaged uh, with respect to these events. And 912D, in part, uh, turns on to uh, significance of breach, which turns in part on number or frequency of similar previous breaches. Now, 
it's uh, the similarity uh, of the previous events that is the area I'm asking you to comment about. Yeah. Look, I think the, um, the interest rate discount issue was quite a separate process sort of issue. I think what's happened in item D is quite a, you know, a nuanced system issue. Um, but I mean, clearly what we've called out in item A and, you know, the reoccurrence of that in item C, I mean, there are, you know, there are similarities in those issues. Yes. Thank you. Mr Dinelli? No? Thank you, nothing Is further. any party other than ANZ seek leave to examine Ms Stubbings? No? Dr Rush? No re-examination, yes. Commissioner. Thank you, Ms Stubbings. Thank uh, you, Commissioner. You may step down. And uh, I should excuse Ms Stubbings, should I not? Yes, you're excused. Thank you, Commissioner. Attendance, Ms Stubbings. Where to now, Mr Donnelly? Commissioner, um, it, it might be for work convenient for you, Commissioner, to have um, a, a brief break. I intend to open very briefly in relation to the issue of car loans. Uh, and the first witness uh, is, a, uh, is um, a consumer witness, um, which concerns uh, a car loan she obtained from Westpac. So yes. it may be that the parties need to arrange right. themselves. Five to eleven. I'll return at eleven. Thank you.